And hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of IoT Live. Uh, I'm Pete Codes, Pete Gallagher. Uh, I'm once again joined uh, by the ace Cliff Aegis. Hey everyone. Uh, you've just landed, haven't you? Like a few hours ago. Uh, no, yesterday, yesterday. Oh, was it yesterday, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, back in Dallas yesterday. Arri- uh, arrived in Heathrow just as the snow started. And <laughs> um, yeah, it was it, all of the th- 30 seconds of snow flurry, but yeah. <laughs> you brought it with you, did you? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it was 24 degrees in Dallas, so I'd rather have stayed there. It's cold here. Oh, geez, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not ideal. Hey, Johnny. Uh, hello, Johnny Chips is there. Um so yeah, we're still. Uh, I'm well, rather. I'm still in the middle of this uh, slightly different setup, which is hopefully a bit more um, and more reliable. Uh, now I've got uh, the Twitch, the, the Windows 10 Twitch uh, application in front of me, so I can do my my chatting there rather than I had to keep switching over to the uh, the streaming machine to do that. So uh, that was a bit of a pain. So yeah, that's working a little bit better. Uh, what I'd like, it probably is one. I'd like just a Twitch chat client that I could fire up. Rather than having to load the whole of Twitch, I'd like just a chat client. I don't know if there's, there's something that you can get. Surely somebody's sorted that problem out. Um, It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Because it's yeah. a bit off putting having the, the, the OBS feed that I know it's just me and you can see it, but we can see, and then yeah. the Twitch bit, and yeah. the sound is off to yeah. the moving lips. And, uh, and yeah, but it'd be good. Someone should fix that. They should. Um, I actually just paused the stream in the Twitch client. So there's a picture of you going, on there now, uh, OBS has one. Yeah, but but OBS has one. But I don't run OBS on the machine that I'm uh, driving here. Essentially, uh, I've got a streaming machine which is completely separate. So I don't want to have to like use Barrier and move across to that and type in. Apart from anything, if I do that and I, I, I try and press my macro keyboard keyboard shortcut, so it gets captured by the uh, by the Twitch chat client. And so uh, it's a real pain. So I need I need one that just runs just on this uh, on my more normal desktop PC. Um, surely, I mean, it's, this is like the normal way people do it. So um, it just seems a little bit odd. I, there must be a, a better way of doing it, personally. But obviously, you, you could be really rich and afford a really nice machine and an RTX graphics card and do it all from the single machine, I guess. But, yeah, you know, who wants to be that complica- uncomplicated? Yeah, you um, know what? I was looking at this, this morning. I've got a, um, it's still in the box brand spanking new. When I bought my Pixel 4, I got given a, um, a, uh, a Chromebook. Um, which is Linux based, and I was I was uh, thinking of getting it out. You know, I'm wrapping the cellophane and finally taking it out of the box. Um, <laughs> had it about a year. <laughs> um, so there's a Linux um, build of OBS. So I'm going to get on that. Then I'd just use that for doing the streaming, and then uh, I'd have a Linux machine in the workshop. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's not a bad idea. So uh, yeah. yeah, I might give that go. Ooh. Yeah, it's Speak not a bad Michael. idea. Yeah, Michael Crump. I've heard of Michael Crump. But I don't know why. Um... But um, yeah, probably Chromebooks don't have enough a lot of RAM. Yeah, that's true. I mean, your Surface Pro Four is is what we should be using for it, just as like I've got. Um, yeah, no, you I'm can on that for yeah. doing the coding stuff. But I need something to do what you're doing, which is streaming. I got um, yeah, I got Pro Four. I got my Surface yeah. Book. So yeah, that's it. Same setup as me. Then really, just need to spend yeah. a bit of time, don't we, and and get it set up. Microsoft yeah. and Twitch. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. So uh, anyway, yeah, apologies for missing last week. It was MVP Summit. Um, and uh, Cliff and I were uh, taking up most of our time attending um, uh, sessions that we can't speak about. Actually, every single one of the sessions they spoke about stuff that is public knowledge. They just told us stuff about those things that isn't, if you get me. So they, they talked about um, uh, digital twins and they talked about uh, Azure IoT Hub update. And they talked about... Um, uh, some, some like uh, I don't know what else they talk about that that we're using, uh, plug and play and uh, percept and and stuff like that. So um, we just got a little bit more information about that that we can't tell you about. Quite obviously, it's all under NDA. Uh, but um, uh, the you know there's not a lot more that that we know now at the moment. I don't think than uh, than uh, than everybody else knows. I don't feel anyway. I, I definitely don't because I missed quite a few of the sessions. Because yeah, well I did. Yeah. I'm, yeah, doing it during, uh, yeah, when kind of, you know, there's stuff going on around the house and, you know, it was just yeah, bonkers last week. So, uh, yes. yeah, there's lots of yep. sessions I've got to catch up on and lots of uh, Xamarin stuff I want to catch up on as well because there's some stuff that was mentioned there as well. Right. Um, but, yeah, but I don't, what I don't get is how they can mention stuff and, but, and say it's all under NDA, but it's all developed in the open. 
It's yeah, a lot of it's on up. GitHub. Yeah, a lot of it yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, Maui, and, and you know they did the same for .NET, and it's like, well, done. it's all on, it's all on, I don't know. It, it's the roadmap mainly. They, they give us a, yeah. a an idea of, of time for release, which I mean, this is actually it's got a competitive uh, side to that for, for for other people developing stuff. So the roadmaps tend to be the things they really don't want people um, uh, broadcasting. To be fair, I can't remember a single thing about any of the roadmaps they told me because I find that to be almost the most useless part of the information. <laughs> I want to see the cool stuff. Um, the, yeah. Their biggest problem is it's virtual. And where it used to be in person, if if people were watching it that ought not to be watching it, and that happened, uh, aka people streaming from from uh, Seattle from one of the sessions, uh, then you could see them and kick them out and they're out of the program. Whereas now that it's virtual, it's very difficult for them to keep track of who's actually watching. Because, I mean, I, I could have put that Teams channel up in the middle of the street and broadcast it to everybody and they wouldn't have been on the wiser unless somebody said... So I think that they have really dialed back the amount they give us MVPs these last couple of years, uh, which is sad, really, because me and Cliff have only known these ones. Did you? You. This um, is your I, first one, I isn't it? Last, I was. I became an MVP, uh, and I missed the last year's one. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, Cliff and I have never been to a, an in-person yeah. one. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Not only so, that. Pete... Also, if you're there, yeah. you haven't got all the. the family and work and clients and other stuff yeah. going on so you can just yeah. say right i'm disconnected from that outside so where i'm going to contract this for a week but hey ho we exactly. complain about things that others don't get to view anyway so yeah yes hey exactly i've put my oh <laughs> i was thinking i've put my phone down somewhere uh you're on it that's where it is yeah so uh yeah <laughs> silly boy yeah um so uh so yeah but there'll be some cool stuff coming out uh off of the back of that there were some cool demos uh that sort of played with some of this stuff i can't tell you exactly what it was but it played with some of the stuff that um benjamin and cliff and i did with azure digital twins and some of the stuff that i did with my robot uh let's put it that way so there was some combination stuff that they they, they that particular session that i watched was really good really interactive session um the information will probably come out in fact i think some of it might be on uh youtube uh, at least a part of it the, uh, they played as a video so um so that was pretty cool uh but obviously we've mentioned some of the new stuff that's come out one of the things that we've got is uh azure device updates for iot hub uh so obviously this is a preview feature uh brand spanking new came out in february look um and what this allows you to do is perform over the uh, over the air updates for your IoT device software. But you could say, oh, well, IoT Edge does that for you by pulling down the latest version of modules and keeping that up to date and keeping itself up to date. But what it doesn't do is uh, IoT Edge is update the underlying operating system. And this is one of the things that IoT Hub update and a properly um, uh, configured machine will allow you to do. Uh, now, there's, it's not widely supported at the moment. It's supported by Microsoft's Linux uh, distribution, CBR Manor, Mariner, which is here. Um, and there's no official installers of anything for this. But if you go and get the Azure Percept kit, the dev kit, that's what will be running underneath here is Mariner. So um, they don't like us saying it, but it's almost like a reference architecture for a lot of these um services um where it's an edge device running this this mariner operating system and um you can coordinate the whole of your device update um workflow through iot hub uh, which is which is great and we've not had a function exactly like that yet um so we, we heard a fair bit about this at, at summit but um yeah a wide range of of iot devices uh, are supported uh, which is nice but yeah it also supports updating yeah. azure iot edge devices so this is like uh, Microsoft tend to do, isn't it? Like Surface and Surface Book and stuff. They they yeah. bring out like a uh, a device, um, which is like the reference. This is how to do it, and and then leave it there for others to kind of you know copy and and build on. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be good to see. Certainly, if it gets done into um, the smaller devices as well. Um, I mean, you know, a Linux distro is still a hefty machine. Is needed yeah. to run that. Um, you know, that's. Bigger than the IoT devices I tend to play with. I tend to play with, uh, I think they call it tiny IoT, I think is what um, they, yeah, they yeah. called it, which is the, the microcontroller ends of uh, IoT stuff, which is where I'm happiest. You know, stuff like this, you know, Tinty boards. Um, mm -hmm. you know, these, these are, that's where I'm happiest, getting down in, in, the, in, the, the, in the bits and bytes rather than, uh, you know, dealing with a massive Linux display on, a, on a, <laughs> what is essentially a, a very, you know, powerful computer. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Johnny Chips, did I find out about the redacted feature? Yes, yes. Um, I found out about many redacted, redacted features. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this is some redacted uh, information that I'm waiting to get a phone call on that I've still not had a phone call on as well, Cliff. Um, more oh, information no, on that. Well, yeah. if, if I find some good news out as a result of a phone call, then you will know about the good news. If I find some bad news out, no one will know. Well, aside from the people that already know what the news is likely to be. Uh, it's good. It's like you're having your own little mini MVP summit here that um, that I can't tell you anything about. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but hopefully I will find some information out soon. Uh, come on and hurry up and, and give me a bell. Either way. Uh, yeah, so look, they've got a workflow uh, diagram here. Uh, ADU, uh, Azure Device Update uh, Management Service, uses IoT Hub Digital Twin properties to orchestrate the up uh, agent's update workflow. Uh, so um, the Digital Twin, actually uh, Device Twin, I'm not quite sure why they're using Digital Twin there. Um, dig digital twins are uh, it's a separate service entirely so although it is a digital twin the device twin but I would thought that they would have called that device twin rather than digital twin interestingly but maybe we just split hairs and being pedantic uh, but yeah it sets the update command property value and then download install apply and it can be reset using cancel and then the uh, ADU agent reads the update command property value and execute the desired property and then sets this back up now this is kind of how you should be doing your updates anyway. Uh, if you're managing this process yourself through, because it's a long running process, then you would probably either do this with a, a, a twin update or you could do it with a direct method from the um, IoT hub. So you'd send a direct method, uh, invoke a direct method rather, um, on the device. And then the device, because that firmware process would take a while, would respond with, yeah, I've got it, 200 OK. But it would probably then set a property in its um, uh, reported properties to say, I'm updating, this is my progress. And then if you're using something like IoT Hub Jobs, then you can uh, monitor the progress through that device twin uh, of how those devices are getting on, pulling down the latest firmware in the versions and stuff like that. So um, that is no, building on that, an existing... You do that with an OS update, are you? With... Why not? Because the, the OS is underlying, isn't it? So the, yeah. you're not going to be able to get a method to update the OS. Well, I suppose you could if it's like a... On Linux and yeah. actually Windows to a degree as well. Um, you, you, you do in-place updates, don't you? Um, yeah, yeah, and then a reboot, yeah, yeah. essentially, and then maybe some configuration afterwards. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, th I mean, these things are <laughs> mega dangerous as well. So, actually, I think in um, the, uh, the Mariner operating system, I think there's an amount of... A saving of the current operating system and then doing the update and then if the update fails it can put the uh the old operating system back to the way it was i think um so it's, all, it's almost a bit like a uh like a docker container it like kind of builds it tries it and it didn't work i'll put this one back yeah i think so, there will be some state there yeah. yeah sounds like mission impossible um yeah yeah it sounds difficult but this is the reason why someone like Microsoft, when you've got your own Linux distribution, this Mariner um, internal distribution, um, then you can you can play with it. You can streamline it and, and make these things work a little bit better. Um, so, yeah. Uh, still, still give me the, the heebie-jeebies, like, you know, a device going offline, is it going to come back? Is it going to have the right OS? Is it going to connect back to IoT Hub? Because um, now it's a new, effectively a new device. Yeah. Uh, we're a fresh OS, so it's now got to do all its device provisioning again. Um, you know, is it going to get back to the same state as it was before? Um, you know, is it going to be reprovisioned correctly? There's a lot of, uh, oh, a lot of things. Of, yeah, there's a lot of things to happen there. Um, yeah, a lot of things that can go wrong, absolutely. I mean, device provisioning, um, in case you've not seen about device provisioning, uh, the DPS service, device, device provisioning service, then you have a service which you link to an IoT hub in this particular case, and you uh, you have a certificate chain of trust. So you have a CA certificate or something on the in the uh, DPS, and then you have intermediate or leaf certificates uh, as well that, that you then give out to... Uh, manufacturers of these devices and they they put the intermediate certificate and the dps service address uh the actually id scope um uh hey rick de Vosch, um rick v v v v oh dear rick v nice. Bosch. hello um <laughs> yeah i was sorry i was trying to read it too fast yeah so um the device then turns on powers up it knows the address and the id scope for the um 
the DPS service. It's got its own certificate. Uh, the, the two can attest to each other. So the the, um, uh, the the IoT device talks to DPS and DPS goes, all right, well, I either have or haven't got a record of you in the system. Uh, so there'll be an onboarding amount that you'll have to do of all the device registrations in DPS first. And then if it can find it, then DPS will assign an IoT hub to that particular device and then pass back down to the device some credentials to be able to connect to that IoT hub. And it's your job then um, to store those credentials locally. Uh, so to, to Cliff's point there, that's one of the things you wouldn't want to lose. However, if you did, so long as you've still got your certificate and the DPS, then you can reprovision yourself back through DPS to go down that route again. Uh, and there are settings in DPS to either allow or disallow that process there as well. Um, and obviously you need to make sure that ideally you go back to the same hub, but there's all sorts of different DPS allocation policies that you can look at there as well. So uh, I'll introduce myself like that this Thursday. Um, you want to be just known as Just Rick. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Fair. Hi, Rick. <laughs> uh, and what's happening on Thursday? Um, are you coming along to Not So T? Is that what it is? I don't know. Um, either way, um, I'm a bit slow tonight. I'm uh, I'm busy creating. Updating. Uh, what? Who? Are you updating? Yeah, well, I've uh, no. I'm uh, creating some new uh, training content for Microsoft, essentially, while well, a company that are doing it on behalf of Microsoft uh, for AZ220. For, surprise, surprise. Uh, only uh, the timescales were way closer than I thought originally when I took the job on, and also the amount of work that I thought I had to do was way more than I thought that it would be. So I had to be really stressful. So I've had to make four sessions that cover the entire of AZ220. They gave me the slides. But I've had to go and, and modify, well, probably not had to, but I'm quite anal about quality and uh, what my slide decks look like. And I know, Cliff, when we got the all around Azure, we've modified slides uh, to make it work for how we want to present the content. And I have to do that. I can't I can't present over slides that that I don't make yeah, any sense not, to me. Not your slides. I just don't, it just doesn't fit your natural flow, does it? I mean, no. I've, I've tried to talk about other people's slides. It just never worked, so... You know, like like we did with Warner and Azure, it's better to sort of you know make them your own, and then you while you're making them your own, you're thinking about what you're going to say and how you, how you're going to put it across. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, uh, by the way, Rick is on Mertz. Oh, so congratulations and, and welcome to, to Mert Yetta. He has joined the Azureish family uh, and he's Yay. got a new show starting on Thursday and Rick is the guest on that. So now all of those different uh, jigsaw pieces or Tetris pieces have all fit into shape and I've done many lines. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, geez. So... Um, uh, it's really cool. So I'm really looking forward to it. And the Azure fam Azure family, Azure Live family is growing now. So that's always cool. Uh, now, where was I? Click the buttons and ding we the do, bells. yes. Yeah. Do all of those things. We're on YouTube. We're on Twitter. We're on, um, uh, yeah, uh, obviously Twitch. You are watching us on Twitch and places like that. So do so, yeah, like and subscribe, you know. I forgot what I was talking about now because I went off on three different... Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, I've got to cover all of this and uh, rewrite the slides, write all the script, record the content, and then edit the content. And they wanted two-hour blocks. It had to be two hours. And the first one I did, I produced it like plural site videos, which are supposed to be very short and to the point, and you sort of speed everything up uh, that's slow. And um, I, I, I recorded live essentially not really live but when i was recording it about two and a half hours worth of content and then by the time i'd edited it i had about an hour and 20 minutes and i'd already put let so i had to redo all my demos and create whole new demos and fill that content up and then i gave it to them and i said look i can't do it this way so it took me hours it took me about a whole week uh, to get that first one session done and i was going to run out of time said so i can't do it this way she said i don't actually want it like a plural site video i want it like you're delivering live training really um but the problem is it's not live training. It's it's a virtual yeah. training. It's a pre-recorded session. And people, when they're watching a pre-recorded session, still don't want to watch you type and mistype and delete. So I still have to chop a lot of that out. And they also don't want me to, don't want to have to listen to me make, you know, foo, foo bars with what I'm trying to say and fumble over my words. So you chop those bits out and you do a little bit of a demo and you click the wrong button and you get to a wrong page and you come back and you have to chop that out. So uh, just today I'm on the third out of four sessions and I had a 34 minute demo that went down to 17 minutes by the time I'd finished doing it. So I've just finished editing the content today. It was 
nearly three hours long and it's come down to an hour and 55 minutes so uh you chop out a lot and yeah it takes ages um and it's the, it's the editing that takes a lot of time as well uh, yeah. whenever i've edited content it just takes forever to demos to yep. get out and catch those ums and ahs and everything else and then, yeah. and then you've got to try and do it so it doesn't look like you've like you know your arms just gone from there to there because you've yep. done a 20 second cut in the <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I've learned quite well with Pluralsight how to get around that now. And it's, it's, uh, Stephen Haunts was one of the, the fantastic resources I used for that, where um, you you never type while you're speaking and never move the mouse while you're speaking. Uh, and that makes life a lot easier because uh, then when you're chopping things, everything is stationary um, and it, it just looks natural at that point. And also you get very used to where you where your voice is and where the words are in you know, it's a bit like the matrix in that in the waveform yeah. of the, the audio and how to stitch that together. You get That's quite a genius adept. idea though. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you make a mistake as well, I go bah and what it does, it registers a big peak in in the audio waveform and you know that you've you where to cut, which is quite handy. Okay. I think some people clap or, you know, any loud noise like that is is quite handy for um, for chopping that sort of stuff out. So little Very tips good. from when you uh, audition and become a plural site author, Cliff, you can use those and credit me, and okay. then I'll credit okay. I'll credit Stephen Hawks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, well, yeah, so, we talked about we talked about uh, Mariner. What's uh, what's next? Yeah, on uh, let's talk about this little beauty, the Adafruit Feather RP twenty forty. Do you want to talk about that, oh, Cliff? Yes. Because uh, you've looked at yeah, that. Yeah, this is um, this is a great little board. So it's got the, um, the 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 same chip, the Raspberry Pi. Um, Pico chips, the RP2040 uh, on board, and it's just had the Adafruit um, love basically. So they're taking the board, um, it's very similar to the uh, the Pico board, but it's got some extra bits on there, like it's got a bit more RAM, um, it's got um, some more PWM channels, um, it's got uh, what else it got on there? It's got a LiPo battery charger. So rather than the Pico where you've got to kind of you know worry about you know plugging the battery, this will. Um, not only take the battery in uh, with a normal um, normal um, lipo battery, but also charge it for you as well. Um, cool. You've got a couple of LEDs on there as well. You've got a normal um, the normal Adafruit uh, Pin 13 red LED, which you just use for blinking and, and making sure the board's okay. Um, mm -hmm. To the point where when you get it out of the box, it's brand new. It's got blinky software loaded on it, and it will just blink yeah. the LED for you, second on, second off. You got a NeoPixel LED as well, which is kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. So you can do your your your, your NeoPixel colours as well. Um, you got the quick connectors or stemmer uh, quick connectors on the end as well. So in the uh, image there, um, it'll be that. Sort yeah. Of, uh, um, yeah. So that there, that's the quick connector. So that there is um, for you to plug it in peripherals. So the likes of uh, stemmer and um, uh, I've got a Grove and the likes, all their sensors yes. have yep. the quick connector on there. Um, so you can just plug them in, uh, and all okay. it is is nice squared C connector. So even if you're uh, um, there, you go. So no soldering. So it makes it dead easy for those that are not into soldering. Um, but also, it's just nice square C port. So um, you can just push in a um, little Jazz T plug in there or, or push in um, if you just want to plug in a nice square C um, connector um, and move it on. And obviously, you can daisy chain those so you can, can have as many uh, devices you want. Uh, 128 minus 7, isn't it? Because the first seven are blocks. Um, so you've got 121 um, devices you can hang <laughs> off your I2C. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, as long as you've got some external got... power, probably. Sorry? <laughs> as long as you've got some external power, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other devices need to be powered separately. You can't power them from the, your host device. But yeah, as a, as a daisy chain of, uh, of signals, you would be good. Um, yeah. It's got a slightly different size board, but the, the pinout is very similar um, to all the other Adafruit work. It's, just, it's the feather system. So all the pins are, uh, so you can do all the stacks of the, uh, the hats. Um, you can get so you can get like LED hats and stuff like that um, to go on top, and, you know, little um, ink displays and things like this. Um, and also, you've got a separate um, boot select button on the end there. Um, so when you're doing, um, yeah, and and USB C um, mm -hmm. as well, kind of more cool. power then is what we'd get out of that, I guess. Yeah, you get more power, more power going, in, which means mm. you can charge the battery quicker, or you can hang more devices off of it. Um, yep. But yeah, it's um, it's a great little board. And then you got the price, twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like, what, £9? Um, so, yeah, a bit more expensive than the Pico, and you've got to get it from the other side of the world. But, um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it won't be too long before the likes of Cremoni and uh, and uh, and others uh, are stocking those in the UK. Um, but, yeah. It's is it, is it not here already? Is this Primeroni yeah. not already got it? I, th I thought Primeroni already had it. I thought that's why I had this on the screen, but maybe not. 
Uh, uh, I don't know. I know it's only, it's only new out, isn't it? Um, so not even DigiKey have got them in stock yet. Um, so I did look yesterday. Um, but yeah, oh, DigiKey don't have them yet. Um, oh, there you go. So they are out of stock. So they yeah. obviously put it on their uh, on their stock list, but they're waiting to get some in, I guess. Um, Gotta stick that in the chat. Yeah. So if you think about the fact that it's twelve dollars, the exchange rate will probably make it about nine, and then they've got to ship it, uh, and Promonia have got to make a bit of profit as well. So. Uh, for ten pounds, you can't complain really. It's a great little board, um, you know, and it's uh, it's got the you know, RP twenty forty chip on it as well. The one I'm most interested in though is seeing the Adafruit one because that's got because this this one just like the Pico doesn't have uh, any Bluetooth or Wi-Fi on it, so you got to plug a, a separate unit in for that, um, you know, to give you a Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, or your three G or something like that. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, the the uh, Adafruit got their version with the RP2040 chip, which is going to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. Um, um, Arduino. Uh, Arduino, not Adafruit. Yeah. Arduino, sorry, thank you. Um, right. So, yeah, That's I mean, it. so, yeah, that one there. That's the one. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, they, they, they keep saying it's due soon, but when soon is, we don't know. Um, yep. But this has got uh, extra bits on it. It's got a, um, uh, a nine degrees of freedom. IMU unit, so you got your um, you got a, uh, a you know a, um, way of sensing all three axes um, for acceleration and position. Um, it's got a, uh, a trusted um, TPM module on there as well, um, which will give you a, 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 a value you can then use when you're trying to connect. Uh, it takes over the air updates, but the over the air updates, if you read a bit deeper into it, um, the over air updates is if you connect it to the uh, Arduino um, uh, cloud. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit like um, a bit like using um, uh, I've forgotten the name particle, particle. particle. Yeah. yeah. So particle only works with the uh, with the, with the particle cloud as well. I'm kind of hoping that you don't need this to be connected to the Arduino cloud. Um, I'm kind of mm. hoping that uh, you can use this without it being connected. You connect it to you know Azure IoT for example or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's got some some good stuff in there. Uh, it's got a microphone as well. I know yeah. As well. Um, which would be kind of cool for, for listening to things. Um, uh, but yeah, again, it's a great little board. Um, they've not priced it, I don't believe, or they hadn't last time I looked, but um, rumours tend to say it's going to be around 20 or £25. So um, I think it was Tom's Hardware um, rumoured that um, around the £20, £25. So um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see when it does come out, um, you know, uh, how good it is. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No indication yeah, this, on price. Playing, playing with these these uh, these these kinds of boards. Uh, talking of Pi Marini, um, I have bought um, this, uh, and it is arriving tomorrow. This Adafruit Braincraft now, um, uh, Pi Marini and Ad uh, Adafruit, uh, but Adafruit in particular have created along with Microsoft Lobe. So, uh, if you've not seen Microsoft Lobe, uh, yeah, look at this. Yeah, this is a cool little hat, isn't it? it goes on top of the um, the Pi Four. So uh, uh, Lobe is a code-free machine learning tool. Uh, I'm, I basically, I've not had a chance to play with it, but uh, uh, Jen Fox from, from Microsoft, uh, I was speaking to her and uh, she, she mentioned Lobe. And now I think uh, she's been involved in this project with, with Adafruit and Microsoft uh, to create this, um, uh, uh, this Braincraft hat. But it's actually more than that. It's uh, kind of, can I see if I can find the, uh, the on twitter here actually so let me see if i can find the the braincraft lobe thing uh hold on please hold let's see if i can find the link to the uh the kit ah oh, here we are so uh ah oh, jeez press the wrong button uh this drag this down here so yeah, uh, machine learning one hundred and one with Lobe and Braincraft. So this thing here, they've got uh, the hat that I've just showed you there from Pyberoni. This thing here, um, but they've also got a camera uh, that they've they've added onto it as well. Um, it's just a Pi camera. Yeah, although I don't know which one yeah, it is because it looks slightly I different. Jen's, I watched the V two um, uh, YouTube video and it's literally just a Raspberry Pi camera, and then all they've, all they've got is they've got a, a, a little case that goes around the Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, okay, yeah. right there we are. So, then. That's, uh, what it that's is. literally all it is. And then that way you've got the option of it being uh, the uh, noir one or you know the low light one. There's like mm -hmm. you know five or six different versions of the camera, isn't there? 
Yeah. Um, whatever you need, but um, for I mean for the price, thirty-seven pound. I mean, it's got like a, a LCD screen on there and all sorts. It's got cool yeah. What's device. it say? Uh, it's got yeah. So a little TFT display, two forty by two forty. It's tiny. It doesn't. It, so it's but it, it it's for what it is. It's cool. Stereo speaker yeah. ports for audio playback. Stereo headphone out. Stereo microphone input. Um, I've got. Does the kit come with all? Does the kit come with some of that? Uh, da, 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 machine learning kit. Here we are. So uh, let me just put this up here because actually I've still got. Is it going? PC's decided to go a bit funny, right? Uh, I can replace the link uh, with that one. Yeah, Four nine six three. That's all right. That's what it is. Um, right out of stock. What a surprise. Um, kit includes that camera board. Yeah, just the camera board. Camera board case. That flex cable. No. Okay. So it doesn't come with the speakers and microphones. You've got to you've got to do that all yourself. Um, so yeah, all I did, I bought. Just use a um, just use a, uh, a a headset, like a cheap headset. Yeah, that'll work. Have a mobile phone. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I I bought the uh, just the hat and the camera. Uh, I've already got two of the cameras, but I've got them plugged into stuff already. So uh, I didn't want to have to take them out. So I bought um, the hat and the camera. Uh, the cameras are dead cheap as well. They're about twenty quid or something, if that. Um, so they're both arriving tomorrow. Uh, whether I'll get time to look at it tomorrow or not, I don't know. Uh, probably be more like next week when I start looking at it. Um, so yeah, it'd be, it'd be quite fun to play with that bit of machine learning stuff. Obviously, if you came along to Knots IoT last uh, last month, then we had um, uh, Olivier Block demonstrating the the, the, the Percept kit. Uh, but there's obviously also the Nvidia Jetson, and I know that. Um, uh, Johnny in the chat there, he's he's been playing with that, and I think um, uh, Paul DiCarlo has got another class that he's running next Wednesday, I want to say, unless it was this week and I've missed it, and it's tomorrow. It might be tomorrow, actually, um, having said that, so it must turn up to that. Um, I think it is tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, that's about uh, machine learning at the edge and uh, cognitive services and that sort of stuff as well. So um, this is just a way of doing a code-free version of that, because the NVIDIA, yeah, tomorrow, look, um, I would have forgotten that. Um, uh, this is a code-free way of doing it. So I've not looked too much into what this gives you and how it all works. Um, but it sounds like, uh, yeah, there's a GitHub repo here. So what's that got? A uh, bunch of stuff. So that's that. Machine learning kit and some tutorials. Uh, rock, paper, scissors and stuff, of course. Um, I think that was the one that uh, Jen Fox was demonstrating on her YouTube uh, video there was the rock, paper, scissors, actually. So... Uh, quite like that so it'd be quite cool to, to play with that actually and and if we can make machine learning accessible for younger people and i know there are other a few other projects out there in fact scratch you can do um uh video uh record video image recognition so you can you can hold things up and i've seen some really cool videos of people are using scratch to be able to bounce things around depending on what you've held up on the screen but making that sort of stuff accessible is is really good because it's sort of a bit of a missing link so that's cool I like that. Um, I saw this as well, look. This uh, Arduino core for the Pico on the Feather RP2040. So Adafruit were playing with that as well. So uh, this is actually Arduino core, not CircuitPython, but Arduino core that they've got hooked up onto that. So um, they've obviously got their little development board for the Feather there um, with the screen on the front of it. So um, that was quite cool. I don't know if you saw that. I, I didn't um, see that one, no. It was kind of cool no. as well. Yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, uh, while I was doing uh, this these these series of video training uh, things, I had to figure out different um, demos to do because I, I needed to use up more time, uh, and I didn't realise all the different ways. Well, I kind of did, but I'd not looked actually at all the different ways you can create an IoT hub. Uh, obviously, you can use the portal, and you can use the tools for Visual Studio Code, and you can use PowerShell. And you can use the CLI, and you can use a REST API, and you can use a template for, for uh, an ARM template, and you can use a .NET template. And so I actually did uh, demos in these in this content using all of these different things, um, which I'd not done before, uh, which was quite interesting. Uh, I just thought I'd point out that you know there's there's many different ways for you to to interact with services um, in IoT in the IoT world in Microsoft. So. Um, you can check that out. I'll stick the link in the chat. I've, I've gone through quite a few of those myself. It's um, just as part of my AZ220 kind of training. And yeah, um, yeah it's dead, dead easy to use all of them. Um, yep. It is kind of cool. 
The only ones you really need to know are the portal and the CLI for the exam. Uh, we won't I know, but, I, I kind else, of, but... You know, as, as I've said before, I don't want to just pass the exam. I want to know the stuff mm-hmm. intimately. Yes, I saw this. Pass the exam and, then, and then the customer says, oh, I need, we need to do oh. this. And you're like, uh... Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I saw this as well, RP2040 wireless module. Yeah, well done, mate. Good luck. What's it? Uh, oh yeah, you booked it, Johnny. Ah, nice. Yeah, luck, when is it? Luck. When is it? When when are you taking it? Do you know, Johnny? Uh, you can reply in the chat. Uh, I saw this as well. Uh, still got a lot of content to get through. Yeah, fair. Uh, yeah, RP twenty forty from Seed Studio wireless module coming soon. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that one, so uh, you can see he recognises these things. Many Seed 19, Studio boards. In, in just before the uh, just before the um, the, the changeover. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, Johnny. Um, uh, let me know. Yeah, you know, t- pay really careful attention. In fact, um, write as much information as you possibly can down about this whole process of going from booking it through to to taking it. And because obviously I've not done that because I created it, I got given it, uh, and there's a good chance that I need to um, uh, write a plural site uh, module uh, or at least course on that particular process. So I will tap you up for <laughs> all of that information and crib that to be able to make a plural site video. Uh, there'll be some beer in it for you. Uh, or something. Uh, so, building a balancing robot with Azure Sphere. Did you see this? This is quite cool. So, uh, this was this is brand new as well. Look, um, but this is uh, the Azure Sphere, one of the Azure Sphere boards, um, and you've got this little robot here that that balances. And, are, you, are you sharing that, Pete? Uh, yes, I am. Yep. That on my Twitch is really really lagging behind. Uh, maybe I don't know. Can everybody else see? Um, my sharing screen. I can see it on my streaming machine. Um, okay. Don't know. Don't know. Maybe it's yours. Oh, no, no, it's, no. Twitch seems to be catching up now. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. Don't know what to tell you. Uh, but yeah. So um, this is yeah one of these Azure Sphere devices, and they've programmed it. And they're also demonstrating with this Azure Sphere this when this uh, device update um, in there as well. So there's there's a video. Uh, somewhere about it that I saw. I thought it was going to be on this page as well. Uh, but yeah, self-contained battery power connected to IoT Central, tiny little PCB, real-time requirements, a little two-wheeled robot. Um, and the, they've got the video in there and you, you can just about see they've got a little tiny display in the front of it and when it's updating, you have to pick it up and lie it down because it falls over if it starts updating. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously it can't balance while it's updating itself. Um, and yeah, it switches between different versions of software. It's quite a nice little demo, actually. Um, so yeah, the Avnet one. I've got two of those Avnet ones, you know, and I must have a look around because I've lost the bloody things. Uh, I don't know what I've, I've done with I've them. I've got one kicking around somewhere. Um, uh, yeah. You need to have a play with it. The reason I need to play with it is because I've not played with Azure Atos yet. So I need to play with that. Um, there's like so many stuff, so many things I've not had a chance to play with. Um uh, yeah, we can, it's, Johnny can see it. oh, yeah. it's too big to, to play and know all of it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's got uh, battery levels and the heading in the, in IoT Central and stuff. So oh, there's a video. Look, um, see if I can uh, show a little bit of that. Let's just mute it because uh, and put it on two X. Look, playback speed, two X. Uh, yeah, hold on. I'll just fast forward to the bit where it's balancing. There we go. I don't know how well that's going to come out on Twitch, but uh, where were they talking about the? There we go. There we are. Bottom icons currently showing the application A on the robot, and then you can do some stuff for. Oops, for updating it. Do that on the command. Blah blah blah. It's kind and of then cool. it's processing all that real time and managing to uh, to to um, you know balance itself. Yep, I'm just going to fill more water up. It's uh, it's kind of, kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of impressive, really, isn't it? Is it three D print? I think it's three D printed as well, isn't it? It looks three D printed anyway. Um, so a dancing plant. We don't have one of those. <laughs> ah. All right. Cheers. That is, that is... Yeah. Imagine working in that team. Right. We just doing that. Money, off we go and just go and make cool, <laughs> cool stuff. Yeah. It's just going to impress people with, you know, and just let us know when you finish making cool stuff and yeah. we'll, we'll get on the internet for you. Um, <laughs> that's just awesome. That's yeah. like, you know, an awesome job to have, isn't it? 
It is. Jump it is. <laughs> yeah, my world with the big Cougar robots. Uh huh. Yep. So um, like containers. Yeah, that's, 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 um, <laughs> yeah, where I'm used to playing all the big big robots in the in the automotive industry. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I'm amazed to hear that Peppa Pig hasn't come up because uh, the amount of Peppa Pig I have to put on YouTube for my kids, nearly always yeah. the next uh, predicted video is either that or some Star Trek stuff. <laughs> One or the other. Uh, so yeah, that was really cool. Uh, next is this uh, Azure IoT Edge eFlow. So th this is a bit confusing, and I don't know enough. I don't understand it enough yet, but it allows you to be able to run uh, um, Edge module type stuff in the Linux Windows for subsystem and connect from your Windows machine to those uh, Linux workloads running in the, the, the Windows subsystem for linux stuff my understanding is is the fact that a lot of the docker stuff and all the docker containers is all done in linux so that's why you have um the, the linux containers so if you have a container which you now want to push out to the edge you can push it out using the eflow because it's going to be a linux container in docker so you can push it out onto your edge devices so that was as much as i understood but it runs a Linux virtual machine on a Windows device. So I, I was pretty sure that you could just get a Linux Docker image and run it in Docker and, and off you go. So I, again, I've not looked into this enough. The God, it's got to be a use case for it because they're putting a load of work into it. So um, you've got Windows and then this Linux virtual machine and the two can talk to each other over a hypervisor. So is that not what docker was made for is that literally what not docker's i yeah, you know this isn't this for running on like edge devices as opposed to on a full because on a well actually no you've still got windows haven't you so yeah it was that it was like i don't know i've not read about it i've not read about it but i've heard lots about it and every time i hear it it's like i don't understand why you're doing it it's like yeah. why just run it in a Docker image and off you go. If, if it has to be a Linux thing or run it in WSL or, or something like that, because this all does the same sort of thing. So, uh, I mean, this is the edge stuff here, look. So uh, that's got that Mobi engine, then Linux user with Linux kernel underneath that and the edge agent and the edge hub. So that's all the standard edge stuff and then your edge custom modules. So it's just running with edge, with IoT edge in Linux, which I think the problem with IoT edge is, of course, that it's um, it's Docker. It runs off Docker. It's Moby, so you can't run that in a Docker image, can you? You can't run Docker in Docker. I don't think. No. Uh, so that's the problem. So you, this allows you to run IoT Edge on your local machine and then write the the the, the modules and test them locally in there. I guess. So it's not, it's not a Docker environment. It's more for testing and building. Is that what you're saying? Um, that's that's what I'm thinking possibly, but I think also you could have. Uh, this on the actual powerful enough edge device where you could have Windows workloads on there and you could have maybe some front end um, uh, with like a nice WPF front end or whatever and, and run that on this, this on the Windows side and have all the nice Windows goodies. But again, there's convergence with Linux as well, isn't there? Um, is this for running modules on a larger edge device and that has a hypervisor? Possibly. Um, but I mean, with a Raspberry Pi or, or something even beefier than a Raspberry Pi... If you're going to do Edge, then I suppose you could do it like down to a sphere level device, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I've got to look. Right. Got to, benefits are look. It's, maybe it's probably it's probably going to be something like you you said, like a kiosk kind of thing, where you've got a big kind of fancy screen and stuff like that, and then um, and then it's running a, a kind of some Linux, I don't know, machine learning modules or something. Yeah. It says here that eFlow enables customers for the first time to run production Linux-based cloud native workloads on Windows IoT. Now, I also know nothing about Windows IoT. Now, it's not Windows 10 IoT. I can tell you that. No. This is this is like a flavor of Windows 10 still, I think. But it's it's sort of slimmed down, badged like Windows embedded, I think. I don't know enough about that. See, there's so much of this stuff that I really should know about. But well, just... Windows embedded was just basically a way of you locking it down. So yeah. it was always meant to be the same and it's completely locked down. So I think, I think Windows IoT is just a replacement for embedded as a name. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, you can barely see it because it's overexposed. But Windows, uh, Windows embedded standard seven, and in fact, I still support customers that are using that. Um, 180 day evaluation um, uh, using that workflow there. Um, so, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I don't know. So, it, it, you go about your days and you look at some of these. A lot of this was the MVP summit sessions. We're talking about this same technology. And I just thought I'd, I'd have a look at it and see what it is. But yeah, I don't know. Quite Not quite sure um, as a developer, as Windows applications. But like I say, .NET yeah. Core, .NET 5, they run on Linux. Uh, Uno platform yeah. runs on Linux. Uh, there's not much that you need Windows for to do this. So what's the Windows part giving you that you can't just run your code directly on the box? Is it, is it the fact that your machine is... If it's Windows, you've then got all the, the Windows kind of IT admin -y things you can do, like yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I mean, you can Possibly. do that with Linux as well, but, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, it didn't really land for me, but then that's because it's not... We don't know enough. Use. So, yeah. um, but for some people, it probably it's like, wow, we've been looking for this forever. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny Chip says Stack Edge now. Geez, I think isn't that like basically bringing one of the modules out of a uh, uh, an Azure um, uh, data center and bringing it to to your uh, to your office and, and you've seen these things. Put Arctic trailer and just bring the, the <laughs> to your house. Yes, yeah, from, that'll work. That. It's 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 a, like a flat box like thing with a handle on the end of it with with fans mm. inside with a with a, a big motherboard inside it and all those um and yeah fantastic look and in fact there was an app uh, i don't know if i've still got it on my phone where you could bring these edge modules using mr into your office <laughs> it's that cool you put it on your phone and you could like see how big they actually looked and this thing was huge yeah. it must have been about that big uh huge <laughs> that's a great thing older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you pass the thing, don't you, Johnny? You, you live near that data center, the the Welsh one, the the UK West, is it or something? It's called. Uh, I forget what it is, but uh, I saw you tweet something out recently. Yeah, you took a picture of it then, said there it is. There's Azure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I can. Don't know if I can find that. Uh, draw. There he is. Let's see. Uh, find his image. Did, 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 did. Scrolling, scrolling. You tweet almost as much as I do, uh, Johnny. <laughs> I probably could have clicked media. But I didn't think it would be as far down as this, actually. Uh, Azure Orbital, you've tweeted yeah. about. See, I'd, I don't know enough about Azure Orbital either. I need to I need to look at that. But that's ground stations as order, a service. You can order on the Azure portal. So you can get a stack edge on the Azure portal. <laughs> oh, there we are. Many, I don't know how many uh, credit cards you have to supply them with. Uh, let's see if I can copy the link to that. You got one order for work? £600 a month. Wow. Bring Azure to your house, eh? There we go. A UK West region look. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was cool. I've not seen that before. So, uh, I think some of the MVPs got a tour of one of the data centers in Ireland, actually, um, a long time ago. Not a long time ago, a couple of years back. So, it's a subscription base, base model. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know. So, uh, so uh, there's that. It's interesting to know why you'd need that on site rather than just going to the cloud anywhere. Be, yeah, be, is it a performance, i.e. you know, latency issue? Or is it a... Um, VAMP, yeah. security, privacy, all those different things potentially as well. Yeah, but um, they, you've got the, the Azure government as well, haven't you, where you get all that kind of in as well. So, uh, you know, it's local processing. So, obviously, it's got to be down to, um, yeah, it's got to be down to, um, yeah, data privacy or, uh, or yeah, sort of uh, latency. So, yeah. So there you go. So th look, this is the, the the GitHub repo for that eFlow thing that we were talking about earlier. Uh, I keep forgetting to turn off my link in the top right hand corner, so it's been updated now. Um, so yeah, that see, look, uh, based on CBL Manor, Mar ah, Mariner, if I could speak. Um, so that same eFlow, the the virtual machine they give you, will be based on on Mariner. So um, yeah, that was quite interesting. Uh, drag and drop coding for the Pico. Uh, this Piper yeah, make it's, looks it's fantastic. You're going to see this. Uh, oh, Very look, that's, cool. bus, that's broken. But uh, if I click this, then you've got Piper make for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and so this is a way of being able to do uh, Blockly-based programming for the Pico. 
Uh, so let's get do the. Ooh, uh, let's go. Uh, let's do getting started. Look, I've not looked at this yet, so this is my first time looking at, at this. But they've done a, a fantastic job from from looking at the uh, ooh, circuit chip. I say they've done a fantastic job. It's not working. Uh, hello. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Wait, let me. Uh, it won't work. Oh no! Don't want to import one really. No, New project. Hmm, your... broken it. I can't click that. I can click import, but I can't click any of the others. They just don't work. Uh, let's try yeah. Firefox. Let's see if that helps. No, I don't want you to be my default. Try this. Maybe you've got to sign up. Maybe I missed a step, but it doesn't make it obvious if that's the case. <laughs> All right. It's not supported by Firefox then. <laughs> oh, okay. Disappointing. Uh, let's just try one more time. That was a shame because I was hoping to demonstrate this sort of live on air. Oh, how disappointing is that? All right, let's try actual Chrome then. Oh, going brave. Uh, very. Let's go. Uh, no, it's broke. Someone's broken it. Unlock projects. Oh, traffic light. No, no, look, they don't work. Nothing works. Oh, that's such a disappointment. I was hoping to have a look at that. Oh, Piper, what have you done? Quick, somebody tweet them to say... You got to be subscribed? It does say on the left there, subscribe. So have you got to be subscribed to the Monthly Makers Club? Or... I don't think so. No, we surely have not done that, made it for kids and, you know, don't want <sighs> to pay money. No, you... surely not. The Raspberry Pi Foundation wouldn't have, wouldn't have allowed that, surely. No. But it... It doesn't say that you can't use these and, and these, but that's the only thing I can imagine is that that is the, the point. But uh, let's have a look. I'm just trying it my end to see if it works here. To prove it's not your... Uh, your uh... Hmm. Works for me, Pete. It's your machine. That's weird. Hmm. Try in, uh, in incognito mode. Just in oh, case it's like a, you've not got something that's blocking it or something, have you? Oh, huh. Well, that's weird. Wonder what that is then. Yeah, you've obviously got something that's blocking it somewhere, like a pop-up yeah. blocker or something like that. Um, yeah. Start. Uh, you would have thought it'd be like a blink onboard LED thing. Um, wouldn't you? That's what I would have liked. I suppose I could do the. What did I, did I click the blink thing there? I could do that, and it will do it for me, I guess. Um, so, but anyway, the, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and do it. We've got it's already ten two. So, um, but yeah, you can see here this is this is Blockly. So Google made Blockly, I think, didn't they? Um, yeah. And it's a little bit like Scratch uh, and Make Code, obviously. Uh, make got dot uh, playpiper dot com. It's a play on that. So. Um, yeah, and you can obviously here switch uh, back and forth between digital views, consoles, data, and Python as well. So you can see the Python code there, which is quite cool. So, um, yeah, do I need you, to have a play with this. The, um, the board, or do you need a real board to plug into? I think you need uh, a board to plug into yes. Yeah, mm. you do. That's, a, that's yeah. a bit of a shame. Missed the trick. Yeah. Um, but then, I mean, no, why? It hasn't got you're... an emulator. It's just got, so you still need the real board. Why, why would, I mean, unless you're going to have like a Tinkercad experience, it's not got a display. Um, yeah. So, uh, or buttons that you can press. So I guess it's pointless having an emulator for it. I'm not missing a trick. Yeah. Pete, you just don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Uh, my setup's using a custom AR model for, uh, okay, yeah, uh, looking at Jetson and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, Play Piper, that's, that's cool. So, oh, um, Let's put that in there. Up there, look. Ah, oh, for goodness sake, have it's all gone wrong. Save that. I'll stick that in the uh, chat too. Oh, and, and the same problems happen down there too. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, so go and check that out. Um, that's worth checking out. I wonder if there's like a, a script error somewhere in my 
terminal. 29 errors, so something it's complaining about. Reference error. Workspace is not defined. That's what the... Uh, if I clear that. Mm -hmm. Something's not happy. Yeah, workspace is not defined at save project code. Interesting. So they've got a bug in their code there somewhere. Uh, weirdly, that only happens when you're not in incognito mode. Um, never mind. They work for me in normal mode. Yeah, uh, don't know why that would be. No. Um, something wrong with your. Maybe you got some something cached somewhere that needs to be. Oh, an extension. Away. One of these yeah, many something. extensions. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So uh, that was that. Um, that's Piper. Uh, what's this? Oh, augmented reality for circuit boards. I don't know if you've seen this. The augmented reality toolkit yeah, for PCBs. Inspect, Inspect AR. AR. Yeah. Let me just stick that link up here. And in the chat. Uh, so yeah, this is dead cool. So you, you get uh, some device with a camera on it and you point it at your circuit board and it overlays the circuit uh, the schematic and uh, essentially the circuit di diagram the, uh, for the board and gives you data sheets and stuff like that but like see so you've got all the test points and everything on there i mean it's that is it's pretty pretty remarkably cool um if i yeah, full he's screen some, that he's got some pretty um you know quite a lot of uh boards in there as well it's not just you know a couple of uh like arduino boards here and there he's got some uh, it's got quite a few um kind of you know big boards in there for you to play with. Mm. So, um, yeah, I did have a look at this. Uh, I, think, I think it was you that tweeted. Someone tweeted it a, a, a month or so ago, and I looked at it then, and it was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, I like that. So uh, that's well worth checking out. Yeah. Uh, what else did I find? Device updates. Service, though, isn't it? You get a free trial, I, I tend to believe. Um, uh, yeah, enough. try for free, does it say? Yeah, it's a try for 14 free. 14-day free trial, yeah. It's a... It's a paid for thing, isn't it? Yeah, you're 14 days, that was it. Yeah. Um, Does it yeah. say how much yeah, it is? That, it, um, it doesn't say um, how much you have to pay after that. That's the problem. Plans. Here we are, look. Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was zero, though. So, I don't yeah. know if that personal one is free all, all the time and you get KiCad and Eagle, so Eagle support. You just don't get any of the other things there, but I don't really need that uh, for personal. That's the whole point, I guess. Hmm, maybe it can be free then after 14 days. Perhaps 14 days you get all of that stuff and or something. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just misunderstanding the, the product thing there. So, yeah, that's that's cool. Check out that. Uh, Azure Atos I mentioned earlier. Um, it's it's worth having a look at that. So if you don't know what Azure Atos is, oh, geez, then um, it's... A way to be able to handle things like threading and memory management on tiny devices. Um, so something like an ESP32, for instance. If you get a program that all in C, then trying to do threading and memory management uh, in C is hard. Uh, and Azure Altos extrapolates all of that away for you. It just does it for you. And you write your code then on top of that. Um, uh, which is, it just takes that pain away. So actually, Azure Altos is born out of something called ThreadX. Um, and uh, from um, from um, oh, what are the what are the sensors, the smoke alarms, and the cameras, um, the Google bought. Yeah, you, you would have you would have thought it's that, but it's not. It's a different. It's not the same ThreadX. No, um, oh. it's a different. That's that's not even ThreadX. It's Thread something. Um, but no, it's uh, no. That you're talking about there's a there's an Artos, there's a Google Artos or something like that. This yeah, is to be completely the, different. The ThreadX that I thought it was was um, was the um, the Nest because Nest invented ThreadX, which is like a mesh network. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not when you look at it. Um, originally, Express Logic. Um, so okay. what's the Google Artos thing? Thread. It was called something else, I think. Uh, RT thread Artos, real time thread Artos. Um, Nest, Let's see what that says. Open thread. So, yeah, nothing to do with it as it happens because uh, I looked that up. Um, but, uh, yeah, as it happens. But, um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, interesting. One I'm thinking of is, is, a, is a mesh network. Right. So, yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, so yeah, that that that's quite handy. That is, and uh, funnily enough, uh, there's um, uh, orbiting Mars is uh, an orbiter that's got ThreadX in it. So uh, you've got now Microsoft Tech uh, orbiting Mars, 
Uh, and on a really bad segue, talking about uh, Mars and IoT, have you seen that the source code for the uh, helicopter that's on the um, uh, the the latest Mars rover, uh, which the name escapes me, um, is open source. So NASA have open sourced that 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 uh, 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 software. So OS, look at this. What's that? A Raspberry Pi demo. What? Really? Yeah. This demo was developed on a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. Wow. Oh, Lord. I'm not like, when, did, when, did, when did it launch? It launched like a few years ago, didn't it? So Yeah. I think it's two years, 18 day. months maybe. Open source. Um, download this. A flight proof multi platform open source flight software on a Raspberry Pi 2. <laughs> I like it. Um, F Prime. Never even heard of F Prime. Uh, no, I think F F Prime is the name of the framework they've created oh, um, right. yeah, yeah, for the yeah, deployment of spacecraft that, yeah. and other embedded applications. Yep. Yeah. Uh, developed at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory F. And there we are. Then that's why it's F. Uh, small scale space flight systems such as CubeSats, small sats, and instruments. Uh, so uh, this is this is where we are already. Thank you. I think. Uh, GitHub.io, in fact, is it the same? Oh, no. In fact, look, get on pages. Um, so, yeah, that's just saying about what the, uh, yeah. Let's do that one. That's all is that. Yeah, it's mega. So, the, there's open source software driving around or yeah, flying they, around. They, they on says the rover's perseverance, but this is on the helicopter. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It is. It's the, it's the, the Perseverance, Perseverance Rover helicopter. Yeah. yeah. I forget. There's, there's, I think they've got a name for the Perseverance Rover helicopter name there we are uh oh. ingenuity yeah ingenuity yeah so that's it that's what it's called um if you don't know then um the perseverance rover that landed on mars and it brought with it a helicopter that was specially designed for the uh the the low atmosphere conditions low atmospheric conditions on mars so they've had to specially design it in a vacuum chamber uh, over at uh, jpl so uh, the, they've got special rotors on there that give it loads of lift um and i think on the 11th of april i want to say is its first uh, test flight so I love uh, that, helicopter isn't it, yeah. first flight. I don't know what's that. Um, and April 11th, look at that. See, no sooner than it. I think it's still scheduled for April 11th. Now they've um, they've um, dropped it on the floor already, so it's ready. Um, there should be an image. There. I think there was an image back there on the um, on the thing on those stories, but I really have to click on one of them. Um, but yeah, so they've they've dropped it onto the onto the floor, ready. Uh, that's what it looks like this double rotor system and it's going to go on these short flights i think it's got three or four s short scheduled flights but it, it it's got to do this on its own it's got to be able to 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 fly all on its own so it's got all of that processing power built into it to be able to handle all of those flights the first ever um uh airborne device that's not coming through the atmosphere and crashing onto the onto the planet um uh, to land on Mars. So obviously one of the things that we really want is for them to start sending stuff back from Mars with stuff like um, bits of Martian rock and stuff like that. So that's, um, that's one of the things about perseverance that, um, that had, uh, has got my kids in te tears of laughter when we were reading about it and watching the, uh, the, the thing is the fact that as it's collecting um, samples, it bottles them up and puts them into a chamber and then poops them out the back. Yeah, and a mission that planned for a few years' time is going to yes. go and basically be a pooper scooper and collect all the poop, um, yep. and then fly those back. Why I don't get why it's pooping them out, why it's not do, is it of... pooping them out? How do you know that? I, I thought it's kept it's keeping it in a receptacle. When, 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 no, it, when it was um, uh, um, NASA, um, uh, did the, the landing thing and that, and they talked about it afterwards. Um, uh, we, me and my two boys sat and watched it, and uh, yeah, the samples are, are like ejected. And um, and then there's a, a mission for in, I think it's two years time to go and collect all these uh, all the samples. There you go. That's the samples. So, I, um, I thought they were kept in like a carousel. Um, no, like they had a vacuum sealed out the back and left no. behind. Um, um, so uh, yeah, it collects the samples and, and drops them off. So uh, yeah, look, the second mission is the sample return. So that's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, sample caching system. The, yeah, you have to collect yeah, them right, and then yeah. uh, and then send them back. 
It does have mm. they right. It does have a piece of fabric from the Wright Brothers original Kitty Hawk flyer. Yeah. <laughs> I like cool. it. You go to um, uh, uh, Museum of Space and Flight in Washington. Um, there's a, a plaque there where they've got a section of fabric from the Kitty Hawk flyer, and the corner's missing. And then there's a plaque next to it that says that the reason it's missing. Some Mars. It's oh my Mars. God, that's um, incredible. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's really really cool. So. <laughs> That is cool. Yeah, I like uh, that. My 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 eleven year old son is uh, is desperate to uh, to become a, a NASA JPL um, engineer, and it all. Is... I'm not sure if you've heard of him, but Mark Rober. I'm not sure if you've seen his YouTube channel, but he's an uh, ex uh, NASA engineer. Yeah, I've heard of Mark Rober. Yeah, worked for Apple and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, his channel has has greatly influenced my son's life and, and what he wants to do in, in, as he gets older. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, yeah, there he is. There's, yep. uh, there's Mark Rubber. Um, so yeah, he, uh, you know, my eleven-year-old, desperate to go and work in uh, in the space industry as an mm. engineer. I always so, wanted uh, to do that. You know, that was always my dream. Still is kind of. I would, still wouldn't mind doing it. It's always yeah, what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have got the right background, Cliff. You're flying planes around for a start. So, yeah, well, um, he's, he's, told, he's told by mum that he's not allowed to leave the planet because he wants to oh, go yeah. and build. <laughs> his, his, his goal in life is going to build the, uh, the moon Habs. and Mars base, and, and mum has said no, you're not leaving <laughs> the planet. Um, and I was like, so if you go anywhere in the planet, you're not allowed to leave it. Like, okay. <laughs> um, and then I just said to him, no, it's fine, I'll come with you. You know, me and you'll go together. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you explain to your boss, I, I can't go to the moon because mum said no, but uh, I need that come. I like it. So we are now five past ten. So we've gone over, and uh, I am shattered. So I think uh, we've been through all of my tabs uh, on there. Yep. So we've gone through a fair bit of information there. So hopefully, uh, and by the way, uh, nice to see you, Dave, as well. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you on Thursday for Sarah Maston at Knots IoT, uh, six thirty p.m. What are you uh, talking about? Uh, project 15, so Microsoft have got this ecology project, uh, IoT, open source ecology project, uh, and they and, and Sarah is uh, one of the leads on that, if not the lead, and she's going to come along on Thursday. And we've also got Alistair, and I want to, I can't remember what his last name is, uh, uh, da, 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 Alistair Davies uh, from Whipsnade Zoo. And Dave, uh, let me just get this uh, web page up before we go. Um I need to update the, the page and send a tweet out tomorrow, but how 30,000 elephant selfies will help in conservation. So uh, he's been involved in this project here um, where they've been doing uh, uh, cognitive services with elephants to try and help the problem of elephants and humans coming into contact with each other and hurting each other, essentially. Um, so they're looking at these thermal images and using cameras and training it to recognise what elephants look like and stuff like that. So he's going to come and talk about that as well. I managed to collar him and, and he's going to come along and talk about that too. So that's 6.30pm. Uh, um, uh, you can find it. In fact, let me give you a link to the meetup in the chat. Um, and then he can come along to that. That'd be really good. And then, funnily enough, uh, the week after, um, uh, we've got Sarah coming along to record at the Agile Engineering Podcast, which will come out then uh, in a couple of weeks' time too. So um, come, and, come and learn about that uh, Thursday, 8th of April at 6.30 BST. It's well worth uh, coming along to that. Uh, if you register, then the link to the Zoom uh, will be there. So, yeah, do. It's that. Uh, we've, we're, at the moment, by the way, we're not doing our normal Thursday thing uh, that we did with uh, Benjamin very kindly. Benjamin, thank you. Um, but I think in a couple of weeks' time, if not next week, uh, we've got uh, Paul DiCarlo coming along and we're going to do some live uh, NVIDIA Jetson stuff. Um, so it uh, must be the week after, is it? Or you can't make next no, week? No, I'm just hoping it's not next week because I'm not here next, next week. Uh, okay, well, we'll yeah, find out. I'm sure Paul will be all right with the week uh, after. At, at one o'clock, I should be somewhere in the middle Atlantic somewhere. Oh, okay. so. Back to Dallas again. Back to Dallas again. <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez. Well, Talking of which, we've got one more Dallas this month, and then that's uh, me. I need to, I need to package up board, uh, a couple of boards, and uh, a couple of, well, at least one Pico, did, and send I them did down to you. Some Houston's um, to to take one out to Paul. Yes, there you go. Then, so, yep, that'd be a good idea. I'll be very jealous. I'll be jumping on that plane with you when you go to Houston, and we can all go. <laughs> yeah. Do it, yeah, that would be nice, I guess. Yeah, um, so. But I can go for business. Yeah, but then you have to isolate when you get back. 
I'm isolated all day every day anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Makes no difference to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right. So uh, we'll leave it like that. Uh, We'll be back again uh, next Tuesday, 9 p.m. GMT. Thank you for everybody for coming along uh, to that. uh, uh, Dave and Johnny Chips, uh, I see that were there as well. And uh, earlier on, um, uh, we had Rick as well. So and TRP8472. So um, I forget, I've not even looked to see uh, it's very bad form, actually, of of who's actually in the chat there. So uh, yeah, Abbott Costello, Bing Cortana, Commander Root, uh, Dave, as we said, Discord. Uh, Discord for streamers have this too, Lurks, Stingy and the Sticks, and TRP8472. Uh, and yeah, Johnny Chips, the uh, the VIP in the room there. So yeah, thank you to everybody for coming along and, and watching us ramble on about the things that we found interesting in IoT this week. Um, and we'll see you again next week. So thank you very much. See you later. Bye.